All right, this is the wind restrictor installation for the Chevrolet C6 Corvette Roadster. This will be the same installation for the power top as well as the manual top. Just a quick installation note, we are going to be maneuvering your top a few times during the installation process to gain access to various panels uh, and areas inside your Roadster. If you do have the power top and have maneuvered it to this position with the tonneau cover, um, it will begin to close automatically after approximately four minutes, so please be aware of that. Also with the automatic top it does require additional power to get your uh, top to maneuver up and down several times in a row, so we do recommend starting your engine from time to time so that you do not drain your battery. Step number one is to remove the rear panel that the speakers are mounted into as shown in this photo here. It's just a few small screw grommets that hold this panel into place and then we're just going to pull it right back. Uh, it is optional that you go ahead and unplug the speakers and remove the panel altogether from the car. However, it's not necessary. It will make it more convenient for you. Now if you are going to want to remove this panel entirely, pay close attention to this bottom illustration. You'll have to disconnect the speaker clip with a small object such as an Allen wrench or uh, something uh, similar by pressing the lever located at the bottom of the clip. I think it's important to note uh, with the power top, the divider shown laying down here, usually mounted where the red lines are, um, is used to keep the top away from the uh, uh, trunk area. Uh, if that is not activated in the back, your top will not function properly. Uh, so if you accidentally dis disengage it from the back, go ahead and snap that back if you're trying to maneuver your top. Okay, now we're at step two. Uh, just a note, uh, from here on we will be applying the same step to both the drivers and the passenger side, just the same. At this point it will help if your seats are in their furthermost upward position. Okay, let's go ahead and locate the seat belt cover panels and remove them. These are held in place by a screw rivet on the side and one clip to the front of the panel. If you will lift up the flap on top of this panel you can see down behind where that clip is located so that you can remove the panel. We can go ahead and lay the panel in the front seat out of the way. Uh, just remember we're going to uh, be placing them back into their original position in a future step. Okay, step three is that we're going to pull the carpet back away from the frame and the seatbelt column area so that we can expose the area we are going to mount our metal brackets onto. Uh, don't worry, this carpet will go back into place uh, exactly like it was before it was removed. Okay, step number four, you will need a small hammer or a mallet to tap the anchors into place inside the seatbelt column. Here's that seatbelt column diagram here. We are going to be using the upper slot of this uh, tower and uh, we're going to mount the anchor inside the middle of this upper slot. The screw and the nut that are currently mounted into this anchor are going to be used for stability while we are tapping the anchor into the column. After we have the anchor mounted into the center of this column, we are going to be removing that screw and nut at that time. Although you can discard the nut after that, hang on to the screw for a future step. Here's a close-up of that anchor mounted into the column flush. Here we are on the passenger side, uh, tapping the anchors into the upper slot. Of course, we're going to perform this step on both sides. After we have the anchor tapped into place, flush, simply loosen the nut with some pliers, take the screw out, leaving the anchor in place, go ahead and discard the nut, and keep the screw for a future step. Okay, step five is that we're going to remount the seat belt post cover panel. Again, perform the same task on both passenger and driver side. Now, in step five, we're only going to secure this panel with the front clip. So the hole on the side of this panel needs to line up perfectly with the anchor hole that we just mounted into the column. We're going to be placing our number 10 screw through this hole 
in a future step to secure our metal brackets. Okay, in step six we're going to snap the metal brackets onto the lower portion of the frame next to the seat belt column that we just pulled the carpet back off of. These are what's going to hold the wind restrictor securely to the vehicle. Make sure the threaded posts are pointed towards the center of the vehicle. The small little metal standoff on the back side of these frame brackets are what we are going to refer to as a bushing. Once you snap the bracket in place onto the lower part of the frame, this bushing should line up perfectly with the opening on the cover panel, and that will allow us to assemble our number 10 screw in the next step. Now these two tabs here are what's going to allow these metal brackets to snap down onto the frame securely. The back and front tab should clamp down under this frame. In order to make sure we're snapping the bracket down into its proper position from left to right, let's make sure that the bracket, uh, side of the bracket is approximately three-fourths of an inch away from the side of this frame here before we snap it down into position. Again, we have to make sure that the bushing lines up with the hole in the cover panel. So if you need to, uh, tap the feet of this bracket in an outward motion slightly until that bushing perfectly lines up with the hole. As you are snapping these uh, lower brackets into place, be careful not to bend out the feet. Uh, if you do, the tabs are not going to snap in under that frame tightly. Uh, if you do bend it out accidentally, go ahead and just bend it right back so that it snaps down securely. Okay, here we are mounting that bracket into place. Again, just rock it forward and backwards and uh, left to right, approximately three-fourths of an inch away from the side of that uh, frame. And it will snap into place eventually and make sure that that bushing is perfectly in line with the hole on that panel so that we can place our bolt through it in step seven. Okay, in step seven, now it is time to place our bolt through this bracket into the seat belt column anchor that we mounted earlier. It's very important in this step that it is aligned properly so that the screw will travel through the frame bracket, uh, through the ABS plastic cover, and then into that anchor uh, that we mounted in a previous step. Now we do suggest using a socket wrench to perform this task. However, you can use a flathead screwdriver if you like. Now I'm going to walk you through what's going to happen with this anchor system here. Now please disregard the nut in uh, my illustration here as we threw that away in a previous step. But as we're tightening the bolt into this anchor here, you're going to notice that it's going to get tight after just a few turns into the anchor. That's because these jaws here are going to open up behind the actual slot in that column, making it a very, very strong mounting point. It would actually take an extreme amount of excessive force to pull this from the vehicle once it's mounted inside that column. Now once you actually feel this bolt enter the anchor, you're going to turn it approximately 14 times until the panel is pulled very tight against the seat belt column. And you will begin to feel it stop at the end. Now be careful not to over tighten this as you may do damage to your panel. Once the feet of this bracket are snapped into place securely and the bolt is tightened down very good, uh, if you give it a slight pull there will be very little movement, if any, in this bracket at all. Okay, step eight is optional, and that is that we are going to cut a very small slot in your carpet so that it will fit perfectly around our newly mounted brackets down here. If you look at it from this angle here, it's going to look like an upside down T. And basically, if you lay the carpet over the bracket, you'll see exactly where this needs to happen. So after this is cut and it is applied over the bracket, it would sit flush around the front side of our bracket there. And then for the rear side of the bracket, uh, these two flaps shown here would uh, basically wrap behind the bracket and meet each other perfectly. Now this whole area here is going to be right at the base of your panel, so you should be able to tuck it right up under the panel. And at this point you can go ahead and tuck your carpet back to its uh, original position. Okay, in step 9 we can go ahead and install your speaker panel back to its original position. 
and the divider as well if you do have one. All right, in step 10, it's now time to install our wind restrictor onto these brackets. Now you'll find already attached to the glass are the metal arms, which will enable you to attach it to the side mounting brackets. You will secure these brackets together using the acorn nuts and lock washers that are provided in your kit. At this point, we do want to make sure that these two brackets are secured together very tightly. Also, please ensure that the bend of the wind restrictor is to the front of your vehicle, allowing your seats to go back. Alright, there we have it. We're now done with our non-illuminated installation. If you do have the lighted version, go ahead and refer to our lighted wind restrictor installation instructions for the Corvette. Enjoy your product from windrestrictor.com.